So if you've ever looked up or seen Art Deco, you know it's this kind of geometric style with a lot of patterns and it looks very mathematical and in general, it looks very hard to make. So the question I'm answering today is can you make Art Deco without too much work super quickly and all the renders and wallpapers that you're looking at right now are made with a single technique that is super fast to set up. So no, um, it doesn't give you all the designs, it just gives you a couple designs that you know you could iterate on, um, but for very, very uh, little time. So either way, here's how we make it. So I'm uh, in Blender 3.0. I think you can go back to any older version. This doesn't rely on uh, too much other than the bevel node. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the camera, very unconventional, and we're going to set this to orthographic. The reason I'm doing this is it turns our cube into a hexagon. If you kind of imagine the silhouette of it, um, perfectly positioned to make a hexagon. And once we start copying this cube, in other words, making a hexagon tiling, um, the distance stuff isn't going to be an issue because orthographic is a uh, very uh, useful camera thing. Either way, uh, once we've done this, I want you to take the cube and we are going to copy it because why have one hexagon when you can have many? Um, I'm going to set this not to relative offset, but constant offset. Uh, the reason I do this is when you start modifying the geometry, you can see the separation changes based on that. Um, whereas something like constant offset does not have this issue. So. Uh, with constant offset, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some numbers that benefit me. So I'm going to have this go two on the X axis and two on the Y axis. Uh, these are the numbers that are going to make them touch on the on this edge because it has a, a width of two. Um, once you've done this, take it, copy it a bunch of times. And now we have a nice uh, row that we can control the size of. Again, I'm going to take this thing that is now its own mesh, if you think about it that way, apply another array modifier, this time still using constant offset, but I want it to go upwards to make a, a plane of, of cubes in a sense. Um, so I'm going to set the Z value to 2, so this time it's going 2 units up, and we can also push this back a bit on either the X or Y. And that should also be by 2 units. So again, nice thing about constant offset, you always put 2s everywhere. And uh, we can now increase this, and uh, it gives us a nice uh, staircase looking thing. Um, again, key insight here is that when you look from the camera, even though this is going back, when you look from the camera, um, it kind of looks like it's flat and uh, facing uh, the camera. That That's the magic of orthographic, right? If our camera, and I'll stop talking about this in a second, if it was set to perspective, uh, we have this issue of kind of distortion as we go back. Orthographic doesn't have this issue. Um, either way, we have our array thing, so I'm just going to position this within our camera bounds. And to make it more easy to see, viewport display, you, you increase this and it's going to hide everything else. So there we go. This is the basis for our thing. And uh, the rest of it is going to be in shading. So take this mesh. We're going to go into the shading workspace and I'm going to do something a bit unconventional. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a bevel node, which is something we rarely use. And by the way, I don't think it works too well in a in a EV. So either way, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to cycles. I know it works in cycles. I'm gonna take the bevel node and I'm gonna use this as a edge detection method. And you're like, why aren't you using uh, what's it called, freestyle or something like that? There's other way, ways to render uh, wireframes. I'm just doing it this way. It gives us uh, more control. So with the bevel node, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and compare it to a normal kind of coordinate system. And by that I mean literally uh, normal coordinates. So uh, for those of you that don't know. The difference between normal and bevel, as you can see, they're very similar, except somehow uh, the bevel kind of highlights every single edge. That's how it's going to do edge detection. Um, in other words, the difference between these is exactly this like area on the edges, which means if we do something like a vector math, calculate the distance, or in some sense the difference, uh, the distance between these, between normal and uh, bevel coordinates, uh, this isolates every single edge and in a very uh, procedural way too. So if I like take this, bevel it, uh, now we get a uh, new edges. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so already this is its own like art, art uh, deco kind of thing, right? Like a, it's a very basic one, uh, but like I was just showing, and I'll do it here. So I want you to look here for the final result. Uh, like I was showing, any edit you make to the original cube is gonna transfer over to our Art Deco thing and repeat. So, okay, so that's another thing you can do. Um, so one thing we can do to get a whole bunch of different variations, obviously, uh, is we can change the mesh, like I just showed you. Um, here's another thing, and this is the reason why we're doing it in uh, shader nodes as well. Um, if I mess with the normal coordinates, we get another kind of effect. So let me do that. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna multiply it by one, one, one. 
which is to say, take the normal coordinates, do nothing to them. Just multiply x, y, z by 1. Do nothing. If I use this multiply node and give this thing a number that isn't 1, like 2, uh, you can see, wow, <laughs> and now we are uh, isolating and kind of filling in certain faces that are all facing the same direction, and this is what the normal coordinates are useful for. Um, so, okay, already we have a bit more complexity. You can also, like, fade in and out. Um, let's try to kind of build these ideas together and make a, a custom Art Deco thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cube, I'm going to inset it, and I don't know, I can either extrude it up, which you can see gives this result, or I can extrude it down, uh, which gives that result. I, I kind of look the, I like the look of that one more. I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to highlight uh, one side. This looks like a very, I mean, it doesn't look complicated, but it looks like a very real, uh, very geometric, harsh design. Um, so that, that's an example of one, and we could even go further with this. We can now take this whole node network. It's calculated, it's good, and we can change the colors. Um, usually, Art Deco things have, like, kind of royally uh, colors. So, for example, um, for the backdrop, I could have this kind of, like, subdued green. And for the other one, I could have this kind of goldish color. That should be a bit brighter and a bit more saturated. And this is, like, the kind of color scheme that you would expect in Art Deco. Um, but again, we can build on this. I can take this edge and bevel it, and that will create an interesting thing. And by the way, all this is going to update um, our shader nodes, the normal calculation. So some of them are going to give cool transformations, some of them not so much. So here's another thing we can do. Let's take this, let's inset it, let's extrude it, and look at that. Now we've added like another layer of detail to this. And by the way, um, if you want to control stuff like tiling size, like how much is there, um, we just scale this thing, this array uh, modifier we made. And if you want to make it smaller like this and you kind of run out of room and you need more, uh, you just increase this number. And this will give you uh, more copies. So you can also pick like the uh, the scale that you want uh, for this. Um, so let's do let's do a little animation. How did I like transition from one to the other, stuff like that. Um, again, remember anything that we do to this cube, and this is, you can already see how this can be animated and gives you uh, much more, you know, interesting results. Um, anything we do to this cube is copied to all of them as per our instructions. We can also change that, uh, which means that if I take this cube and apply some shape keys, if you've never messed with shape keys, this is a way to literally animate like what's going on in edit mode. I apply two shape keys, our base is key and key one, and go to key one, and let's say I do something like this. And I could also scale it down, I don't know, have it go to some other position. Uh, well, now uh, we can animate going from one uh, to the other, just like that. And you can also do an animation for uh, switching the color that's highlighted. So I don't know. I mean, th there's not like too much to talk about here. This was just a cool technique that I found that is like uh, very useful for this specific scenario. But I imagine you can get a whole bunch of results, especially once you get crazy with this, like you're rotating it. I mean, I guess you wouldn't want to rotate it too much because then you see the uh, gaps in between. Uh, but you get a whole lot of stuff um, from this method for free. And you can also get, again, variation by changing this array modifier. Although this kind of gives it more of a three-dimensional effect that I'm trying to avoid. I want it to look two-dimensional, uh, but with a lot of detail. So there you go. That's the uh, technique. I don't think I need to ramble about it uh, for too much longer. So anyways, uh, thank you for watching my tiny little discovery. I was just playing around with Blender. I'm like, oh, this is Art Deco. So whatever. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, what you're seeing right now is a list of 750 to 800 some patrons, um, which is to say, if they think it's a good idea, maybe you think it's a good idea. So uh, Patreon, there's a link in the description. Here's what you get um, other than supporting both this channel and the CG Matter channel. What you get are blend files. This blend file that I made, obviously going to be available so you can mess around with it. Um, any blend file I've made over the last two years, which is many, almost like one every day or every other day, those are going to be available as well with just a one month subscription. You can get all the blend files. You can get early access to tutorials and I'm um, recording in bulk right now. This is the third tutorial I'm actually recording today um, for a reason that I'll talk about later. But you could watch tutorials earlier, uh, sometimes multiple days earlier than everybody else. So you don't need to wait, and you can get more uh, immediately. And additionally, there are exclusive tutorials that I post a couple times a month. Um, nowadays, it's about geometry nodes.
um, that uh, nobody has access to unless you're a patron. So not CG Matter viewers, not Default Cube viewers, got to be a patron. Uh, but if you're interested in those benefits or just supporting either of these channels, either would be greatly appreciated. Link in the description. Thank you, uh, current patrons, active patrons, and um, Art Deco uh, tutorial is a wrap.